Hey, it's Mel. So um, today I want to do a review of Camtasia Studio 8. I've been asked to do that and we'll add that to the uh, best screen capture software series. Okay, Mel here with Screencasting Wizard, helping you digitize your knowledge to get it online and web ready. So I just wanted to give a real quick update. I've been asked to do a, uh, to add Camtasia Studio version 8 to the review for the uh, series that we did last year for the best screen capture software series. And actually previously I did do a review on uh, Camtasia Studio version 7. So you'll find that right over here. And um, in that, what we ended up doing was Camtasia Studios, you know, is the uh, PC version of the, uh, the 800 pound gorilla for screen capture software out for the PC environment. So when we first did the review for Camtasia Studio version 7, it uh, came out like this. For uh, cursor effects, it had a 5, and we gave it a 2 for multiple video tracks, and then uh, multiple audio tracks. Again, we gave it a 4 because you couldn't get a whole lot of audio tracks on there. And then the annotations and callouts, we gave it a, a 3. So overall, it came out 3.5 on a rank of 5. Okay. Now, when we take a look at the same thing for Camtasia Studio version 8, let's take a look at the cursor effects. So in fact, yes, uh, Camtasia version 8, when they came out, uh, actually now also does a lot of the uh, same, same types of things with the cursor effects uh, as we were able to do with version 7. So the same kinds of things apply. Certainly, select the, uh, the track. And as you can see, you have the, the basic highlight effects here. You have highlight, the spotlight, and I like the magnify feature quite a bit. Because if you notice, see that little tiny, tiny cursor right over there? Okay, so you can actually take that. Notice, see, see how that cursor size now goes up and down? So that's huge because you've seen me uh, discuss in previous videos how it's important for your learners over the internet to be able to see what it is that you're pointing at. And so that cursor size helps out quite a bit. All right, so we'll give that, that a 5 for the, uh, so we give a Studio version 8 a 5 for the, uh, for the uh, cursor effects, being able to adjust the cursor size specifically and also those cursor highlights. Let's take a look at video, multiple video tracks and multiple audio tracks. That's actually pretty easy to assess because if you notice here, I've got tracks 1 through 3, but see this little plus button here? Now that allows you to be able to add many, many more tracks. Um, and actually, we're not sure what the limit is, but uh, you can get, if you can get at least, <laughs> if you can do eight or ten tracks, and uh, you've got a screencast that you're going to do, then more power to you. Uh, typically, you're probably only going to use maybe three or four tracks at a time, okay? And what those allow you to be able to do is, if you have, like, let's say you have another video here in the clip bin, and I want to add that to the timeline, I can actually then take all of that and have another video on that track, or if I want to have an audio track as well, I can separate out, you know, have another audio track. So notice here I'm using three different tracks. In that sense, you're able to be able to use uh, different, um, different media clips, including video, audio, as well as many picture uh, images, and even some of these callouts and so on. You can put all those on different tracks. So that helps out quite a bit. So for video tracks and audio tracks, that's huge. That's a huge change if you look at that. 7 we gave, uh, in Camtasia Studio version 7, we gave a 2 for the multiple video tracks. Now we can give it a 5. So that's huge. Okay, and then the annotations and the callouts. And, and just the ability to be able to do pixelation and animation around an X, Y, and Z axis. So let me show you that to you in just a second here. Let's pretend this bit of uh, Disney information here, this Disney list of Disney characters, uh, is a real people and you might be showing how to manipulate a spreadsheet or something like that but you've got this ID column that you want to uh, keep that really probably should be kept confidential let's say so what pixelation allows you to be able to do is to add a callout in this particular case like in using Camtasia Studio 8 and see how that pixelation box now comes in it's called the callout in studio uh, version in Camtasia so you can take that and uh, drag it and size it around to you know, the, the part of the screen that you want to, uh, to hide. And then you also can adjust the intensity of that as well. So maybe it's just a little soft filter there that you want to have, and then that's beautiful, okay? So that takes care of the pixelation, but how about this X, Y, and Z axis thing that we're talking about? Well, what that is, is being able to take any call out or any objects that you add into your timeline, like let's say this little picture here, and we want to be able to spin that around on the Z axis, okay, but also spin it around on the X axis, and then also, well, the Z axis would probably be this, <laughs> and then the Y axis is being able to spin it around the vertical, the vertical axis. So you're now able to do that much more cleanly in Camtasia Studio version 8 than you were able to do in Studio version 7. 
So you do that now with a visual properties menu here, and then you can, let's say you want to begin that animation, let's say it's over here, and you want to begin that animation from there and you want to bring him over to the lower left uh, and then spin him around an axis. So we would just basically take it at a point in the timeline where we want that to begin, click it over here, and then select the, uh, the media clip that you want to animate, and then just add this animation from the visual properties uh, panel over here. See how it puts this little ramp icon right on your timeline here? So what this means is during the duration of, that's the starting point over here, and then over here is the ending point. So during that duration, what you're able to do is say, okay, that starts it on the left end of that, and then on the right end is where we want to end up. So we click the right end of that, and let's say we want to have, by the time it gets to the end of that ramp, we want to have spun him around um, 180 degrees on the y-axis. Notice how I'm doing that over here, okay? Now let's take a look at this. So it's a little bit uh, less weird on the spinning. There you go, okay? So for that, we're able to do that now in Camtasia Studio version 8, and so we'll give that a 5. So overall, I'm happy to give all fives across the board for Camtasia Studio version 8. Now again, this is for the PC, uh, so that's, it now, it's, uh, it kind of reclaims its, its position as the 400-pound you know, gorilla in the PC space for screen capture software, all right? So if you have any questions, I'd love to hear your comments below. Just go ahead and post them below, and uh, just keep in mind, Digital Know-How, my online course for teaching you how to screencast and develop your own uh, online courses and so on is live. Basically, giving, uh, letting you, teaching you the same things that I do in all of the screencasts that you have, you've seen me do, including these picture-in-picture -picture effects. Uh, that's all live uh, now, and you can go ahead and click here to find out a little bit more about that course. All right, this is Mel with Screencasting Wizard, helping you digitize your knowledge to get it online. Web ready. Till next time. Take care.